Brazil nuts don't come from farms. They're collected deep in the Amazon rainforest, often by indigenous people. Desde o nosso antepassado já trabalhamos. But harvesting them is not easy. Collectors gather, crack, and haul 110-pound loads out of the jungle. Se bater na cabeça, pode até levar à morte. But this industry nearly collapsed 20 years ago when middlemen paid farmers just pennies per kilo. As famílias também não não ia no mato, né? As castanhas praticamente estragava no mato. So harvesters banded together to sell directly to factories, increasing their income significantly. Now the industry is at risk again. This time because of deforestation. We visited the Apiaca tribe to see how they saved this big business once before and if they can do it again. Almost every other nut that you can buy in a store comes from massive plantations. But Brazil nuts can only be foraged in the wild. They grow across this region, spanning Brazil, Bolivia and Peru. The industry supports 60,000 families in the Brazilian Amazon. Many are indigenous. Villagers say 95% of their community works in the industry during the season. Each morning, workers load up their dinghies. They commute 10 miles along the Rio dos Peixes. Then they hike into the rainforest. Evanusen Krishi Morima is the president of the Piaca tribe. It's para identificar outra pessoa que está em longa distância, né? Para a gente saber a direção certa. They're headed to Brazil nut trees that grew thanks to these guys, the agoutis. The rodents bury the fallen pods to eat later. So when the rodent has a bad memory, there will be a new tree. If a rodent is eaten by a jaguar, there will be a new tree. The Brazil nut trees can live to be 500 years old. They reach 165 feet tall, as high as a 15-story building and their trunks over six feet wide. Because they are usually above every other tree's uh, uh, the canopies. Collectors wait for the pods to drop naturally between November and May. That's what makes this such a sustainable nut. Each tree drops about 300 pods every season, and they can come down at 50 miles per hour. You are down there and one of these things fall in your head. You're dead. Catado, oriço por oriço. Then they get to work cracking. They make their way back, this time carrying bags that are roughly 100 pounds. Pega uma caixa de supermercado e lava a castanha. Workers will spread them out on beds to dry them in the hot sun. Depois da secagem, a gente pode embalar. Coloca num saco limpo. The piaca once numbered in the tens of thousands. But they haven't had an easy past. Facing massacres, persecution, epidemics, and enslavement from rubber tappers. And now, there's less than a thousand apiaca left. In the 1900s, they started selling and exporting nuts to Europe. They depended on middlemen from big cities who made the trip to their remote village to buy nuts for just six cents a kilo. Não, não tinha ninguém para recorrer. Era o jeito de entregar a nossa produção com um preço bem mínimo, né? It wasn't lucrative enough, and many families left the industry altogether. It collapsed. It collapsed big time. When the price of the nuts is so low, then it is not an incentive to people to harvest it. While agricultural cooperatives aren't a new concept, environmental technician Antonio Vieira Gimelo thought it might work for the Apiaca. So he joined four tribes across Mato Grosso into one cooperative called Copama. The collectors would then sell directly to the cooperative, cutting out the middlemen completely. And the idea saved the local nut industry. E hoje em dia já estão trabalhando com oito real kilo, né? That's about $1.64 a kilo. It may not sound like much, 
but it's more than a 2,000% increase from the six cents collectors made before. Workers then transport the dry nuts to a processing factory in the town of Juruena. Uma viagem aí de 500 km de distância para esse produto chegar até na Copavan. Once the nuts arrive, workers transfer them to the dryer. They'll stay here for 10 to 12 hours. É, lá é colocado lenha, manda o vapor para cá, secou. Manda para os barracões onde ela vai ficar estocada para a gente estar trabalhando durante todo o ano. The factory tries to stock up, so they have enough supply to last the six months of the off-season. They're dried again for four days to extend the shelf life. Then they had to get steamed to loosen up the shell. É, a gente leva para torragem e depois elas voltam para fazer a seleção final, que é o processo de tirar casquinhas, ver se tem alguma danificada, separar o restante da quebrada da inteira e é, fazer um empacotamento que é para levar. Although harvesting them is labor intensive, Brazil nuts are used to fill space in bags of mixed nuts. I personally, I like cashews better. I know I like almonds better. Probably I have eaten too many. But Copava has managed to make it profitable. It processes 370 tons of Brazil nuts a year in this factory and brought Apiaca families back into the industry. The nuts will get packaged and sold to be used in snack packs, chocolate bars and cakes. Some of the biggest customers? The US, Netherlands and Germany. Now, the industry is facing another challenge. Deforestation. Esse trabalho todo, ele pode se acabar, entendeu? A floresta acabando, a gente não tem como continuar esse trabalho. Nearly 5 million acres of the Amazon were cleared in 2021 to raise cattle and grow soy, African palm and corn. They, what they want is land. And they just get rid of all the forests. They, don't, they are not after the woods. The state of Mato Grosso has one of the worst rates of deforestation in Brazil. And the Apiaca don't have enough resources to protect their land themselves. Now the government does protect Brazil nut trees, meaning it's against the law to cut one down. That's why you'll see single Brazil nut trees standing alone in fields. Brazil nut trees depend on an ecologically healthy forest. They can't survive without the cooler temperatures of the rainforest or the special bees that pollinate them. Over time, they stop producing Brazil nuts. It takes about 15 years to, uh, for a tree to die slowly. It's, it's, it's a very sad picture. It, it makes me very sad just, just thinking about it. So can the locals save Brazil's nut economy again? One way to do that is by investing more in diversified final products like this nut oil. The oil sells for double the price of raw nuts. And making it saves broken nuts from going to waste. It's used in everything from food to cosmetics. Perfumes, cremes, hidratantes. Advocates say the solution could also be as simple as marketing. By some estimates, locals can earn three times the profit from Brazil nuts than from illegal logging. Brazil nuts are also one of the most sustainable nuts. And growing this industry could give locals a reason to preserve their ecosystem. Essa, essa árvore é super importante para essas comunidades. Hoje é fonte de renda. And that's the value and the magical thing about Brazil nuts is that by consuming every nut, we are protecting forests. And, and we are doing our little bit of actually saving the Amazon.